Hey there, welcome Redneck in the Philippines. This is old Stuart. Still in the Philippines. But I found out recently that I'm going to have to be leaving. Uh, on a 36 months month visa, uh, I was informed that it's been cut short. And I was given the reason of uh, I didn't pay my immigration in a timely fashion during the COVID lockdowns. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, I got here in 2018. Well, no, let's see, 20, well, 2018, uh, and left and went and went home in uh, 2019, <clears throat> late 2019. Then I came back. February of 2020 and uh, March of 2020 it was the beginning of the uh, which will probably be uh, become known as the uh, historic lockdowns of the Philippines <laughs> no doubt about that but yeah they locked it down in March and they stay locked down for, I really don't remember how long it actually was, but it was a good while, uh, approximately about a year, I think. And uh, during that time, uh, having no computer or stuff like that, uh, I had no idea how to keep my immigration up to, up to date. And uh, I don't even—I don't even know. If, I still don't know if you could have, if you'd have tried. But anyway, I got a uh, pretty good ways behind because even after the the lockdown was over and the immigration office opened back up, you could only get by appointment in the building to pay your immigration. Now I was willing to go up there and have a fixer. You know, these people walk around outside with a little vest on that, you know, they look like they work for the immigration department, but I really don't know if they are actually employed by the immigration department. Uh, they kind of like, you know, when you're watching a nature channel with sharks and a little fish to swim around the shark's mouth getting the little pieces of scraps from what the shark eats. I think that's pretty much what it boils down to that these fixtures are. They get a little snack, you know, off of everybody that uses them to pay their immigration. And uh, I was willing to do that because I was kind of worried about, you know, that shit getting behind so far. So I went. Uh, it, it was uh, 24 months before I could actually walk in the building and pay it in person. Now this, this is a long time behind and it adds up to be a substantial amount of money. And I think I ended up paying for 24 months. Well, no, it was 24, 26 months because you gotta pay an extra two months to stay any longer. So it actually ended up being sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars, U.S. dollars. So I got that done. They kept my passport at the embassy. I mean, at the immigration for two more months. They told me to come back in two more months, uh, I, which was uh, I can't remember what month. Anyway, I went back. Hundred twenty more dollars. They gave me my passport back. And they told me that I had to, until March the 2nd or March the 3rd, to leave the Philippines. And uh, actually, I think, I thought they had made a mistake. Me and my, my wife both thought, well, my girlfriend. If I was married, I wouldn't have this problem. But me and my girlfriend, we uh, thought the guy had made a mistake. And we uh, had it checked out by another office and yeah well I had to leave the, I got to leave the Philippines the 
within two months. Uh, I wish they had told me that a lot earlier because it put me in a financial bind uh, trying to get the money up to get a ticket out of here. And it put me in a real, real hard spot between a rock and a hard place, what they say. But anyway, I think I got it worked out. Thank goodness. Uh, I thought about going to Thailand or Japan like I would have done before all this COVID restrictions and shit happened. You know, most people would have just got a ticket for Japan, flew to Japan, sat in the airport for a few hours and, and fly back the next day. And uh, that would have started your visa, you know, all over again. You'd have had another 36 months. But with all the restrictions to get back in the country here in the Philippines, you can't do that. You know. And me, being a man of limited financial means, I can't afford to chance going to Japan and coming back and they telling me, well, you got to have the insurance, you got to have, you know, this, that. I, mean, I just, hell, I'm just going home. I, you know, by the time I spend the money and the worry about going through all that, I'm just going home. And I probably won't come back until all this bullshit is lifted. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, I like the Philippines. I've been here four years. I, I like the Philippines. I like the people in the Philippines, you know. Uh, the politics and government, I really don't get into it that much. Uh, I know a little bit about what goes on over here. Uh, probably goes on over here about as much as it does any other country in the world. You know, as far as anything bad people that talk people talk about this bad but <clears throat> but the thing is you know uh, I hear a lot of people complaining about uh, all the restrictions that they got going on now you know I mean to start out with this place was like a war zone when they first locked it down in March of 20, 2020 or, or what was it 2021 no 2020 yeah they locked, locked it down March of 2020 Man, this place was like a damn war zone. They had military at the at, at checkpoints in town with damn block roadblocks up, M16s, mask on, shields. I mean, I mean the streets was pretty much deserted except for the few people trying to get to the money gram to pick up some money that people had sent them, you know, so they could get a bowl of rice on the table because they was unable to go to work in any kind of way you know. and that lasted for a long time and uh then it slowly started opening back up but then you had uh then you i mean you had to wear a damn mask a shield everywhere you went every time you went inside of a business you have to have a mask a shield uh, and you know, and there for a little bit, even when they stop wearing the shield, you still got to wear the mask everywhere you go. Even you can wear it around your chin, but it's got it's. I think it's a damn permanent fixture now. A fucking mask around your chin, you know, like you like it's really gonna do some fucking good around your chin. But hey, you still got to have it on your chin. It don't matter if it does any good or not. But <clears throat> yeah. So. Yeah, the Philippines, yeah, they, they shot themselves in the damn foot all right, you know, with all this. They opened back up, but you got to have insurance to get back in here and all this bullshit. And, man, uh, I mean, I'm 55 years old. I, I don't want to mess with all that, you know. And what if you're missing something? Because if you ever tried to get into another country, if you're missing one item off your checklist that you got to have to get in that country, they don't, you ain't gonna get in. Unless you can, you're a really good talker and, and you can persuade one of the agents or whoever to let you in or let it slide. But, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go back home and I probably ain't gonna come back until all this shit is over and done because, I mean, 
And I'm going to be honest with you, you know, I, I will miss the Philippines. Well, I won't miss the Philippines, but I miss the, my family here. I got in the Philippines. I miss them very much while I'm gone, but, but I will not miss all the bullshit bureaucracy about the mask and and the vaccine mandates and uh, I mean that's just totally ridiculous you know I mean at this point in time you know I mean it's lightened up a whole lot as far as I know uh, I, I think I made it through the whole thing without getting you know getting sick although I think I may have had it one time but I never did get tested. I think I may have had the Omicron, but I, I never got tested uh, several few months ago. But, uh, I mean, even, I mean, even to leave the Philippines, you know, you have to have a damn COVID test. And, uh, and, uh, I, I mean, I've heard of COVID tests coming back positive when the people weren't even sick, you know, and they said, that I don't have COVID, but it come back positive, so I can't leave the country. <laughs> And don't nobody that's just came to a foreign country uh, just to visit want to be stuck there and can't leave. I mean, I can damn promise you that would be a, that would be a bad situation for somebody that just came to visit and they won't let you leave. You know, that would be fucked up pretty bad. <laughs> but uh, I mean, that'd be messed up for me. And I've been here four years. You know, if I get a test that says positive and won't let me leave. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be very upset, you know. But, uh, I mean, even though nobody messes with you over here, you know, your rights are still limited, you know. I, talk, I was talking to my son on the phone. And I said, shit, when I get back to America, I don't know where the, I'm going to be patient because I've lived in this country for so long. You know, you have to have patience because you have you don't have no rights, <laughs> you know. Not really. You don't really have any rights. It's always going to be the foreigner's fault, whatever happens. But, or, I don't know if I'm going to be opinionated or voiceful because I know my rights when I go home. You know, when I go home, <laughs> I, I don't know how to act. You know, I've been away from America for over two years now, you know. And I, I'm a little, yeah, I'm looking forward to going home. Looking forward to getting back on American soil just by just in itself. But uh man, I'm sure we're gonna miss my family over here. I'm really gonna miss my family, man. Every fucking minute I'm gone. And I don't know when I'm coming back, you know. I'm going over there to try to make us make some money. You know, go over there and try to make a little money and try to get a little you know, something going on, make some money. So, and uh I don't know when I'll be back, but if they don't lift these damn restrictions over here and everything, it'll be a lot longer than uh, than it would be if they had no restrictions, put it that way. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to give you my little story on that. You know, I feel like I got shortchanged a little bit on that deal. You know, I supposed to have 36 months on my visa and kicking me out of here in a little over 24 months. Yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't too cool, man. You know, I paid what I owed them, you know. But I guess that don't matter. I had a good reason for not paying, but I guess that don't matter. <laughs> See, you have no rights, you know what I'm saying? You, you have no fucking rights. So. I mean, you do what you, you do what you're told, and pretty much smile about it and go about your business. Now, that's what it boils down to. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to go back to my country and I'm smiling all the damn way, you know. But, uh, yeah. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, Y'all be cool, be safe, and, uh, you know, Come to the Philippines. It's a little bit of trouble to get in here right now, but you know, it still ain't that bad. Still a nice place to be.